Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I would like to explain integrating Azure AD with ASP.NET Core web application. We can do this in very easy and simple steps. This can be done in seven simple steps. And here is the step one. We have to create a new app registration. Go to portal.azure.com and log into the site. If you don't have the Azure account, you can create one for free. And here you have to choose Azure Active Directory. If this icon is not available over here, you can do Azure Active Directory over here and it opens the Azure Active Directory. And from here, you have to go to App Registrations. In our demo, we are developing a patient registration application. So I'm just creating something like patients information web app. And we have to register the application. So once the application is registered, you will be redirected to this page. And also if you go to the default directory, it will show your application over here. Now we have to do the step two. Step two is we have to add identity.web and identity.web.ui packages to our solution. At present, I do not have any web application in my machine, so I'm going to create a new web application. Here I have opened the Visual Studio and here I'm creating a new project. And I would like to create model view controller project. And I'm naming this as patient patient. Clicking on next and clicking on create. So here the project is created. Now we have to add NuGet packages. Here you have to search for identity.web and it will show you the required packages. This is the first one. Accept it. And this is the second one. Install and accept. Step two is done. Now in step three, we have to generate few scaffolding items which are related to identity web or the packages that we have installed just now. Now in Visual Studio, right click, add new scaffolded item. And from here, we have to choose identity and this was added by the new packages that we have added and now we have to click on this add button. It opens this pop up and from here you have to choose login and logout. And also we have to choose a data context class. If you don't have a context class, you can create new one. If you have an existing one, you can choose the existing one and click on add. This will generate an area in your solution. For the first time, it may fail. You need not worry about that. You can click on the add button again, then it will add the packages. This is because sometimes it is failing to add the entity framework core packages. Now it failed. Now click OK. Now again, click on add. Once the scaffolding process is completed, it shows you this file and also it adds this area. So this is the default code generated because of that scaffolding. And what we are trying to achieve here is we are trying to use Microsoft's code, which is there in the packages that we have added for sign in and sign out in our web application. Now in step four, we have to add Azure AD configuration in our app settings. In Visual Studio, go to app settings.json and here add a section Azure 
AD and in here we have to write few properties which are needed for Azure AD authentication. One is instance, it should be https colon slash slash login dot microsoft online dot com and tenant ID. This is the tenant ID that is given to my user account, or maybe if you are developing the application for any organization, you can give your your organization's tenant ID. I'll show you from where you can get it. And also we have to give the client ID. This is the ID that we have registered in that got generated by the app registration that we done in the Azure. And also we have to give callback URL. This is for sign in callback. We have to give sign in hyphen YDC. This information is there inside the identity web packages that we have added. So when we try to run this application, if everything works first, it will go to Microsoft's login.microsoftonline.com and there it will ask us to log in. And once the login is successful, it will do the validation. The Azure will do the validation and it will redirect back to this URL with the token, with the, with the authentication token. And after that, the application will use the token for the authentication and also we have to give sign out callback url also and this should be similar to the previous one like sign out o i d c oidc stands for open id connect and now we have to get these two properties client id and tenant id we can get this information from our app registration if you have closed this app registration you can simply go to the azure active directory and from here in the app registrations you can find your application and here you have to copy the application id this is the client id go back to the visual studio and copy it over here and the tenant id that you can get from here you can copy it over here and you can paste it over here so this step is done. Now step five, we have to modify the code in startup.cs file. I mean, we have to add more code in startup.cs file to enable the Azure AD authentication. So now I am in the startup.cs class and here I'm writing two namespaces just to make my life easy to find out the methods those need to be added in this class, Microsoft.identity.web and also using microsoft.identity.web.ui now we have to make change in the config services method now here i am writing services dot add microsoft web app authentication this is a web application so i'm writing microsoft web app uh, authentication and it expects a parameter configuration and also if you see here it is showing the default config section name that is azure ad so when this application runs it refers to the azure ad that we have defined over here but instead what you can do if you have if you want to give a different name uh, to this config, se config section you can write something like patients patient info azure ad you can write something like this and you have to give the name over here but if you choose to write azure ad by default you can skip this parameter as that is an optional parameter and after that you have to write something like services dot add mvc and after that here you can write it has two, diff two, two overloads and we have to choose this method where it accepts two, sorry, where it accepts one action. So in this, we have to do the configuration related to the policies that we need to define for authenticating the user. Now I'm writing here something like policy, the old new authorization policy builder and I press control dot and here I am choosing this using 
and after that i have to mention we want this app to have a, a, an authenticated user so so i am choosing require authenticated user and here i am calling the build method now we have to register that policy in the options dot filters dot add and here we have to use authorize filter and to this we have to pass this policy and also we have to add web.ui because we are using the logout feature so this is needed so if you don't want to implement the logout using i mean adding this is not at all needed and after that we have to call use authentication middleware over here so this is all the changes that we have to make inside the startup class this is because when the application runs it adds webops authentication using the configuration that we made over here and after that it, it will create a policy where uh, we are saying the authenticated user is required and we are mentioning that with the filters that it has the mvc has by passing the policy now we have to add our platform inside our app registrations to enable the authentication this will help microsoft azure to validate the client that is using this authentication go back to our app registrations and here in the authentication section you have to click on add platform and choose web and here we have to give the redirect url this you can get it by going to properties launch settings.json here you have to take the ssl port and you have to build the url something like this https colon slash slash local host colon and after that we have to give sign in oidc so once your application is authenticated with azure ad it will be redirected to this url as we have configured this in the app application settings.json or here so it will be redirected to the account controller uh, that we have added in using the scaffolding and also we have to give the logout url also and here we have to enable this because once the authentication is successful the azure will return uh, the, the authentication token in the query string so we have to enable this so that the token can be used for uh, implicit flows and click on configure over here so now we have added the authentication now we can run this web application so actually i have already logged into this application so it is showing now run the application again and now we have to use an azure user to log in now i am using an azure user that is there in my active directory and i am logging in and i am entering the password Now it is asking for a consent. I'm just 
pressing on accept now it redirected to the welcome page now i am closing this application i am back to visual studio over here and here i just want to add login and logout links in the layout.cshtml so i am writing something over here I can choose at the rate user dot identity dot name. This will display as the name, and I'm adding the logout link over here. A ASP hyphen controller is equal to account. This is for the logout link. ASP hyphen action is equal to it should be logout and the area is asp hyphen area is microsoft identity identity and here i am mentioning it as sign out now I'm running this application again. It redirected to the Azure and it is showing the user that is already logged in and it is asking for the password. now it is showing the user that is logged in and also showing the sign out link when i click on the sign out link uh, it is showing the error it is looking like there is an error with here it seems there is an issue uh, let us fix this issue right now so this is fine and okay this is the issue over here so we have to write sign out instead of logout now i am running the solution again have logged in and now i am clicking on sign out so it went to the sign out page that is all if you like my video please do subscribe and share thank you for watching my video